Hello and welcome to this video on finance. Today we're going to talk about the effects of different compounding periods and we're going to use that to build up to the idea of effective and nominal interest rates. So interest rates are very interesting and for them there are two things that we have to consider. One is what type of rate is it? So interest could be charged at 12% per annum, for example, which means that a certain percentage of the overall amount is charged every year. Or it could be 12% per month, which means that 12% of that amount is charged every month. And if we were to think of that as an annual interest rate, that means 12% is charged 12 times, and it's similar to 144% per annum. Or you could even have a daily interest rate, which means 12% of an amount is charged every day. Now we note that annual interest rates are by far the most common. So if you come across a monthly or a daily interest rate, that is usually something quite out of the ordinary. So let's look at an example. Mr. Baloyi goes to a payday loan company to help fix his broken car. The loan company charges a monthly interest rate of 8%. After four months, Mr. Baloyi has saved enough money to pay off the loan. If he borrowed 12,000 Rand, how much did he have to repay? So we're going to use our formula there for compound interest, right? But we note now that the interest rate is a monthly interest rate, right? So we've got 8%, right? But our period of four months means we have to use an exponent of four because interest is calculated four times because it's a monthly interest rate over four months. And we find then that after four months, he has to repay 16,325 Rand and 87 cents. So usually if you get a monthly interest rate or even a daily interest rate, uh, chances are you're dealing with a loan shock or some other disreputable form of getting credit. Right, so then the other thing we have to consider is how frequently interest is calculated or charged, right? And this is called the compounding period. So if they tell you that interest is compounded annually, it means that interest is calculated once a year. Semi-annually would mean twice a year, quarterly four times a year, monthly 12 times a year, weekly 52 times a year, and daily 365 times a year. So we've got to be familiar with those terminologies there. So let's then move on and look through an example. And first, before we do that, we note that different compounding periods have absolutely no effect on simple interest or simple decay. So it's only when we're dealing with compound interest or compound decay that compounding periods are actually going to have an effect, right? So if the type of rate is different to the frequency with which it is compounded, we have to adjust the rate so that it matches the compounding period. What do I mean by that? So if you've got an annual interest rate, but you are compounding it monthly, you've got to adjust that annual interest rate to turn it into a monthly interest rate so that the interest rate matches the compounding period. So let's do an example. Hammond invests 4,000 Rand in a fixed deposit with a term of two years. He earns an interest rate of 8% per annum compounded monthly. What is his investment worth at the end of the term? Right, so we're going to represent this on a timeline and we know that we're dealing with two years, right? So we've got year one and we've got year two there, right? We're told that the interest rate is 8% per annum. So we want to earn 8% each year. But then it says that it's compounded monthly, which means that interest is going to be calculated each month. So we've got to take our year and we've got to break it up into the 12 months. And in the first month, we find that we can't charge a whole 8%. We've got to charge 8% divided by 12. So we've taken our annual rate and we've turned it into a monthly rate by dividing by 12. And then in the next month, we also have to charge 8% divided by 12. And it continues like that, so that in each and every of the 24 months, we are charging an interest rate of 8% over 12. Because then our compounding period, which is monthly, matches the interest rate, which is now a monthly interest rate, because we've taken our annual one and divided it by 12. So now, each year, instead of just charging 8%, we are charging 8% over 12, 12 times, right? So that 
our interest rate becomes 8% over 12 and our number of periods is going to be equal to 24. Right, so then we plug that into our formula, right? Our principal is the 4,000, right? Our interest rate becomes 8% over 12, and two years becomes two times 12, so that it's 24 months, right? So everything has been adjusted to reflect the fact that we're compounding monthly. So our periods is counted in months, and our interest rate is now a monthly interest rate. And we find that Hammond gets 4,691 rand and 55 cents at the end of that period. This leads us to an adjustment of our formula. So we've seen that A equals P, 1 plus I to the power of N, and that's what you get on your formula sheet. But for you, in your own mind, you can turn it into A equals P, 1 plus I over M to the power of N times M. What on earth does that mean, right? So here, M is going to be how many times a year it is compounded, right? So that I there will usually be an annual interest rate, right? And that M will be how many times a year it is compounded. So if it is compounded monthly, then M is going to be 12. If it's yearly, then M is 1. Um, if it's weekly, then M is going to be 52. And that N there still remains the number of years, but then N times M will give you the actual number of times interest is going to be calculated. So N times M is still the total of number of times interest is calculated. So let's look at an example. Joan invests 10,000 Rand at an annual interest rate of 9% compounded daily, calculated the appreciated amount after four years. So now we've got our formula there, but we know in our heads that even though the formula sheet says equals P one plus I to the power of N, we're going to adjust our interest rate so that it is a daily interest rate. So we take our 9% and divide it by 365 because it's daily and we've got to take our four years and multiply by 365 so that the exponent becomes the total number of times that we calculate interest over those four years, right? So there just to highlight what we're talking about because we're compounding daily, we've got to multiply by 365 and then that would give us the actual solution there, right? Another example, Kachiso invests 10,000 Rand at an annual re interest rate of 6% compounded quarterly, calculated the, the appreciated amount after three years. So here, now we're compounding quarterly, so we've got to divide by four, and we've got to take our number of years and multiply by four, because we're compounding quarterly, and that'll give us the new appreciated amount. So, how do different compounding periods affect the accumulated amount? Let's see. George invests 3,000 Rand at an annual interest rate of 13%. What is the accumulated amount after two years if interest is compounded annually, monthly, or daily? So for annual, we're just going to use 13% over two years, and we find we get 3,830 Rand and 70 cents. For monthly, right, we now have to divide the interest rate by 12, but multiply the years by 12 as well. And we find that we get 3,885 Rand and 35 cents as our accumulated amount. And for daily, right, we now have to divide the interest rate by 365, but our exponent is 2 times 365, and we get 3890,61. So what do we see there? It seems that the more frequently you compound the interest rate, the higher the accumulated amount becomes. So compounding annually gives you less than when you compound monthly, gives you less than when you compound daily. So this is why the compounding period is important. It actually affects the accumulated amount at the end of the day. But now we have a problem. Let's say you have 10,000 Rand to invest for five years. Bank A offers you an annual interest rate of 13% compounded annually, whereas Bank B offers you an annual interest rate of 12.5% compounded daily. Now you know that compounding daily gives a higher amount than compounding annually, but now the annual interest rate is higher than that compounded daily interest rate. So which one's gonna give you a higher accumulated amount? Well, without doing any sort of calculation, we just don't know. Right, so we've got to find out which bank is going to be the best to invest our money with. So, 
When interest rates have different compounding periods, we cannot easily compare them because the compounding period influences the final accumulated amount. To make a comparison, we must find out what annual interest rate compounded annually will give us the same accumulated amount as the interest rate that is not compounded annually. So we want to find a compound did annually calculated once a year interest rate that gives us the same outcome or the same effect, the same accumulated amount as our interest rate that is not compounded annually is going to give us. So let's see. Bank B offers us an interest rate of 12%, 0.5% compounded daily. So let's find out what annual rate compounded annually gives us the same accumulated amount. Right? So we know in order to calculate the accumulated amount, we've got that formula there. But then, if we just want to use I, an interest rate that is compounded annually, right, we've got to write the expression like that. But we know that we want both of them to accumulate to the same amount. So we are just going to equate these two to each other like we've done there. So now we've got a missing variable i, and i is going to be the interest rate compounded annually, which gives us the same outcome as this 12.5% compounded daily, right? And some terminology there, that i, the compounded annually uh, interest rate, is going to be called an effective interest rate because it gives us the same effect as that 12.5% divided by 365, which is not compounded annually, it's compounded daily. So that compounded daily interest rate, we're going to call a nominal interest rate. So then we've got to divide both sides by 10,000. Then we have to take this fifth root of both sides to get 1 plus i by itself, right? Then we've just got to simplify that exponent there. And we find this thing here. And what we found here is actually a formula that we can use to find the effective interest rate when we have the nominal interest rate. So that 12.5% is the quoted annual interest rate. That 365 is the compounding periods in a year. And that I is the annual rate compounded once a year that gives you the same effect as the quoted rate. And we know that quoted rate is also called a nominal interest rate. So we are going to call this I the effective interest rate. So that I is the rate that gives us the same effect, the same outcome as the nominal interest rate. So we're going to call that I EFF in our formula, right? So now we just need to solve for i effective. We take the one across and we find that the effective interest rate there is 13.31%, right? So how do we use this to answer our question? Well, we now know that if we have a 12.5% interest rate compounded daily, that's the same as having a 13.31% interest rate compounded annually, right? So the 13.31% compounded annually, which is what bank B offers us, is better than the 13% offered by bank A. So we should invest our money with bank B. Now let's look at that formula again, right? We now know it's 1 plus I EFF is equal to 1 plus I over M to the power of M, where M is going to be the number of times per year that that interest rate is compounded. So let's find the, the effective interest rate of a nominal interest rate of 14% per annum compounded weekly, right? So we've got 14% compounded weekly, so M is going to be 52. Right, so our nominal interest rate compounded weekly, and then we take the one across so that we can find IEFF, the effective interest rate by itself, right, and we get that the effective interest rate is 15,01%, right? So a annual interest rate of 15,01% compounded annually gives you exactly the same outcome, exactly the same effect, exactly the same accumulated amount as a nominal interest rate of 14% per annum that is compounded weekly. So let's summarize what we've learned. 
when the compounding period is more frequent than the period of the interest rate, we have to change the interest rate so that it matches the compounding period. And the way we do that is by introducing m, which is the number of times per year that the interest rate is compounded. How many times a year it is compounded? That is m. Then, the more frequently the compounding period is, the higher the accumulated amount. And we use the effective interest rate to compare interest rates with different compounding periods. The effective interest rate is the annual interest rate, compounded annually, that gives us the same accumulated amount as the quoted or the nominal interest rate. And the formula we used there is 1 plus i effective is equal to 1 plus i over m to the power of m, where again m is the number of times per year that the nominal interest rate is compounded. Right, so I hope you've got some more information there in order to make you an expert at these financial matters, which is always a good thing to know a lot about. Good luck.